the Mini 4 Pro. That's what today's video is all about. Is it worth buying in 2024? A three month review? Let's do this. So hello and welcome once again to the channel on this uh, very nice day in the UK for once. Although the cold weather is about to uh, set upon us. So the Mini 4 Pro review. That's what today's video is about. The three months review. What's it all about? Is it worth it? So starting off, it's lightweight. It's small. It's the perfect travel drone and takes up very little space, even with the Fly More combo package. It's fully packed with features, which I'm gonna go through and cover in the video. The first one I want to look at is the camera. So the camera up to 4K 60, 4K 100 in slow-mo, rotating camera, as you can see in this clip just here, it's the only camera like the Mini 3 Pro that actually rotates. So you can do vertical shots, which makes it easier for TikTok, Instagram Reels, and it saves cropping in post. It has 10 bit color with D-Log and a fixed aperture of 1.7, which will let lots of light into the sensor and enable low light footage with ease. Night mode will reduce the noise and sharpness to your footage. As you can see in this clip here, that 1.7 aperture lens lets a lot of light in. And by using night mode, that will reduce, like I've just said, the noise and add sharpness to your footage. Top features packed into a tiny little drone, Active Track 360, tracking from near and far using the inner and outer circles, being able to adjust the distance and the height, although there are limitations as the drone likes to follow you from behind when starting off. Waypoints being able to plot a desired route and get the drone to fly automatically, taking photos or video, for example, at each waypoint that you've selected. You are able to save waypoints so you can return to the location for different seasons like winter and summer or you can do a day to night comparison a really useful feature that's now been brought to the mini 4 pro cruise control really useful for autopilot scenarios where you can set it to any direction and you don't have to hold the sticks permanently and uh, freeze your thumbs off it's a really really useful tool like I say, if you're holding those sticks for long periods of time, you can, thumbs can start to jitter and uh, your footage can become a little bit unstable. A really good, useful tool, cruise control. One of my favorites, to be quite honest with you. The Mini 4 Pro now has omnidirectional sensors. So you get front, back, down, and side sensors now on the Mini 4 Pro very similar to the uh, Mavic series and the Air 3. And it's a great step up from the Mini 3 Pro. The Mini 3 Pro doesn't have any side sensors, but it still has its limitations because it, it won't see power lines and it won't see small twigs and trees. But the majority of the times it will have your back. Personally, I wouldn't 100% trust it, but in the times that I have used it, it will avoid buildings and other large obstacles, including myself. If you fly it towards yourself, it will brake or bypass you, whichever mode you've got it set on. So just recently, the Mini 4 Pro has had a latest firmware update and that brings more features, Active Track 360 and now the new Auto Track, which gives you those active shots. As you can see in this little clip just here, the drone will actually make its automated flight around you. It will hold, it will move to a different type of flight and it will track you while it's doing it as well quite a nice new touch on the mini 4 pro they've also introduced vision assist vision assist is where uh, it's able to see front side and rear and you can use those sensors now as little cameras you can see this little clip just here it is a little bit ropey if you like if you want to call it ropey it's not very clear, but it will give you an idea of where you're actually flying, just in case you've got a Karen creeping up behind you. 
Now the Mini 4 Pro comes with uh, different controllers. You can either buy it with the old RCN2 controller or you can buy it now with the DJI RC2. And I must admit this little fella has come on leaps and bounds as opposed to the old DJI RC. I found that the DJI RC was a little bit laggy, uh, but this uh, bad boy just here, it's had a new processor and it is pretty sharp. You've got 1080p video footage and the signal quality with these uh, new antennas, with four antennas now, and the latest 04 transmission makes it absolutely superb. It's still got the same nits value, 700 nits brightness, and to be quite honest with you, it's more than enough in my opinion. But I would recommend fitting an anti-glare screen protector on these screens. Because if you're out in bright sunlight, you do tend to get a lot of glare off the screens. There will be a link down in the description to what I use on the DJI C and the DJI RC2. These screen protectors do work extremely well. As you can see in this little clip just there, the before and after and it does take away a lot of the sunlight glare that you can get when you're flying out in bright days so the not so good features on the mini 4 pro so the fixed aperture can be problematic on bright days because you'll get a lot of light hitting the sensor which means that your mini 4 pro will bump up the shutter speed to compensate for the light going in and that can make it look over sharp. Uh, there is a, a way to solve this, obviously by using ND filters, as you can see in this clip just here, Freewell do an absolutely fantastic set of ND filters, which will cover a wide range of scenarios. A link will be down in the description if you fancy picking yourself up one of those packs. Obviously using the ND filters, you can then use the 180 degree rule, which is great if you're looking for motion blur in your footage. However, it will help lowering that shutter speed so your image will look pretty spot on. Another bad point, well I say bad point, it's not, um, not bad really, but the battery life on the DJI Mini 4 Pro, very similar to the uh, Mini 3 Pro as well. Um, they boast 34 minutes of flight time. You never in a month of Sundays are gonna get 34 minutes out of one of those batteries. I'm looking between anywhere between 20 and 22 minutes on a normal flight and you can reduce that down to 18 if you're using some of the intelligent flight modes. However, having said that, if you've got the fly more package and you get the extra batteries, um, then your luck is in because you're going to get at least an hour's worth of flying on the Mini 4 Pro. What's it like in the wind? Well, it's a level 5 wind resistance, the Mini 4 Pro which uh, will handle up to about 25 mile an hour. But at the end of the day, you know, if it's very windy, you're gonna get wind gust warnings on your controller and you need to be very careful as to how far you're out. Because if you take this bad boy too far out, not like the bigger drones, like the Air 3 or the Mavic 3 series, they'll get you back no matter what. But just be careful. I've not had any problems with the Mini 4 Pro. As far as wind, it does handle the wind quite well. In summary, would I recommend it? Yes. Is it better than the Air 3 or the Mavic series? No, only the size factor. Being a small size factor drone, it makes it the perfect travel drone. You can actually fit it in your pocket if you've got large pockets. Would I upgrade from the Mini 3 Pro to the 4? Well, if you're looking for the obstacle avoidance, the 360 omnidirectional avoidance, and waypoints waypoints is one of my favorite features as well cruise control there's another good feature absolutely love cruise control and now you've got the vision assist then yes if you're not bothered about the 360 avoidance and all those other features you might as well buy the mini 3 pro and in my opinion if you're starting out in the drone world and you want the best that money can offer the mini 4 pro is in my opinion one of the best drones on the market today do I think that DJI will make a better model this year? I wouldn't expect so, unless they upgrade the camera and still keep it under 250 grams. 
what would I like to see on a new mini drone? Well, as I just said, a better camera, better prop mounting system like on the A3 and the Mavic series. These little screws, these are an absolute nightmare to get out. And if you get one stuck, you're going to be sending this back to DJI. Um, is they not the best system? I much prefer the twist off propellers like you get on the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 as I've just said. So there we are in a nutshell. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on a new mini drone from DJI. Have you upgraded from the Mini 3 Pro to the Mini 4 Pro? And do you think it's the best mini drone on the market today? I certainly do. It's fun. It's fully packed with features and it does just about everything. Be nice if you've got that camera very similar to the Air 3 or something very similar. Like I say, they can make it small enough and they can make the weight less than 250 grams. So there we go in the nutshell. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've got something out of the video. If you have, don't forget, give us the old thumbs up. And if you're new around here, why don't you consider subscribing, dinging the dong and all the rest of it that goes with it. And you might like to watch those couple of videos over there. And if you do, I shall see you over there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.